Corey, what's your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Ew, are you a five-year-old? I am. (laughs) Well, I might be introducing you to a new pizza topping in today's podcast. Oh, goody. I could use some new uh, exploring my horizons. You really could. Speaking of which, we've got a story where you can't fix stupid, but you can try to fly it with some sticky icky in the back. Okay. Okay. Flying stupid. Flying while stupid should be Flying while stupid, maybe, yeah. (laughs) Well, we're also going to get to know a not-so-little, little little old lady in Florida. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. Always good for the little old ladies, or not-so-little. All that and more coming up on this week's episode of the Florida Freak Show. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Ladies and gents, boys and girls, step right up for the Florida Freak Show! Welcome back to the Florida Freak Show. I'm Corey O'Donnell. And I'm Kirsten O'Donnell. And if you've ever read a Florida news story online or seen a Sunshine State newscast, you know that Florida's greatest export is weird stories about people that live and play here. And we have a lot of those to tell you about, don't we, Kirsten? Of course we do. Ripped from the headlines. (laughs) Ripped. Ripping those headlines. And I guess really what I need to do first is just address the elephant in the room. Let's do it. There's a huge elephant in this room. Can somebody get that elephant out of here? (laughs) So the elephant, of course, is that Florida is once again at the epicenter of the great COVID mask debate. We're number one. (laughs) We're number one. You know, between a desire to keep us safe and those who say that mask ordinances are government overreach. Mm -hmm. So meetings were held across the state this week, but Palm Beach County's meeting went viral. Yes, it did. And for good reason. Mm -hmm. So this from the Palm Beach Post. Palm Beach County's seven commissioners voted unanimously at a commission meeting on Tuesday to make masks mandatory in public indoor locations like grocery stores and restaurants. Right. So like much of the state, the county saw an explosion of COVID-19 cases recently. In fact, in the two weeks leading up to the meeting, the county recorded 3,600 new cases, which is basically a third of all the cases that they'd had since reporting began in mid-March. That's nuts. It is nuts, and it's it's grown significantly since then. So the county had hoped initially to allow more businesses to be able to reopen, but then that was put on hold because of the big spike in cases. Right, as it should be. So at the meeting, a throng of maskless county residents erupted, telling the commission that they were brainwashed, saying that masks were literally killing people. Twitter, of course, had a field day with it. Many compared the meeting to episodes of the TV show Parks and Recreation, (laughs) which, of course, featured a lot of dramatic town hall gatherings with uh, crazy, irrational residents. Well, you know how much I love Parks and Rec. It's one of my favorite shows. And that Patton Oswalt thing where he just launches into a fan fiction about Star Wars is hilarious. (laughs) I mean, just... Keep, it just keeps filibustering on and on. But it's so true. This happens at council meetings, at uh, commission meetings all the time. Whatever issue is is afoot at the time or whatever and how they feel about it. And uh, they have certain time limits. You know a little bit more about it than I, I do. I do. I worked for a um, local city government for a year uh, in their public relations capacity. So I went to every single city council meeting. That's, and... like, that's like a badge of honor right there. Oh. The red. Was, badge of courage the, at at times it was rough at times it was hilarious mm-hmm. um some sometimes very sad sometimes very awkward sure um you have your regulars and that's one thing i'm wondering how many of these people at the palm beach county commission meeting were their regulars right they just people that always show up always have something against whatever decision the commission has made that they that they want to and they just want to uh, th- th- for their time for public comment. That's their time to really you know give it to them. And it's their right. Yep. It is your right as a citizen Absolutely. to speak at these they, meetings. You need, need to hear from the people. So glad that at these meetings they limit the amount of time because you can do that. Sure. You can limit the amount of time right. as long as everybody gets well, just, equal it just, opportunity. Yeah, it gives everybody a chance to get have their voice heard. But yeah, so we, we had a lot of um, regulars at the meetings and mm-hmm. we heard a lot of really interesting things. We had... Um, One of my favorites was after Hurricane Irma, it took a long time for folks, for some folks to get their power back. Right. Not that the city council can do squat about that. They don't run the electric utility, but people were still there to complain about it at the city council meeting. 
first council meeting after Irma. It's like a week and a half into recovery. Somebody gets up there and is complaining about how he doesn't have his power yet. Mm -hmm. And it's because he doesn't live in a nice, rich neighborhood, Mm. even though he still lived in a fairly nice neighborhood. It it wasn't like a fancy neighborhood. Uh And he goes on and on and on for his three minutes. And at the end, the mayor, who (laughs) does live in a very nice neighborhood, he's a local attorney, uh, said, you know what? I, I don't have my power back yeah (laughs) that's the kind of thing that would just usually shut someone down whether it did or not yeah yeah Yeah, i mean his time was up so you never really get an opportunity for rebuttal but yeah yeah, i mean you would have your regulars you would walk into the council meeting and you'd be like oh there's so and so there's so and so there's so and so i i knew the names of so many citizens just because they would show up at meetings yeah well, and, and that's their right is to come there and, and, and air their grievances, whatever those may be. And that's the, the a lot of times the best part of these meetings oh, is yeah. to hear <laughs> um, the different reasonings as to why. Because it really is just sort of, uh, depending on what the issue is, it's just sort of uh, a laundry list of conspiracy theories that that people will have against like a particular you know and, and a some lot of, them, of conspiracy yeah a lot theories. of them you know and, and some of the ones that we were hearing from the Palm Beach County meetings oh. were really something you, you were, we so were what ta- were your favorites yeah. well I mean I have to bring up the one we were talking about a little earlier uh, about the woman who said that she's not wearing a mask on her face just like she doesn't wear underwear because stuff's got to breathe, That's baby. right. you got to let it breathe. <laughs> I cannot believe somebody got up at a council meeting and said she that. she got a laugh, though. Oh, I well, mean, yeah, yeah, of it's, course it was she like, did. It was like I don't know if that was comedy. her intent. It was great, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I really appreciated the woman who got up there very determined and said, you cannot make laws. That's <laughs> Congress's job to make laws. Wait a second. It's like, why do we have city governments? <laughs> yeah. Then? Yeah. I mean, they're just up there to, you know, just talk back and forth and be blowhards. Apparently. Apparently. To this, yeah. This woman. Yeah. You can't decide what it is that we're supposed to do as a city, as a legislator. <laughs> oh yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, there were all kinds of stuff. Lots of biblical references, oh, Adam yeah. and Eve, came up because god breathed life into adam and eve and and you just can't take away and our lungs precious breaths you know with with god's perfect breathing system god's perfect breathing system thank you for bringing that Mm -hmm. exactly the devil's law uh uh crimes against humanity uh with the mass i mean these these things are little tiny things that are over our faces i yeah i had no idea uh masks are killing people one person also said i'm worried about my doctor now he wears one like 12 hours a day doctors what about our nurses they're right ha- yeah i mean all of them they really should I, I guess according to this person they should really take a second look at what those masks are doing to them <laughs> they wouldn't have any idea wearing them pretty much uh, they're in their uh, entire we're gonna shifts. try not to get on our soapbox here sure. but, but come on um oh and the citizens arrest that was the other really good one that i really like how she was gonna start making citizens arrests to anyone that was um that was doing anything that would that would violate anyone's freedoms oh okay Okay. Good idea. So everyone's going to be arresting everyone. Yeah. Uh. So in, instead of living in a in a in a in a more perfect society where everybody feels like they can uh, they can do what they want, it'll just be a big police state. Hey, listen. I like my freedom <laughs> just as much as the next guy I'm a big or a gal. Yeah. I enjoy freedom. Freedom yeah. is nice. You know what else? Living's nice as well. You know, whatever. Freedom to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. One of my favorites, though, was um, it wasn't actually in Palm Beach County because there were public meetings all over the state about this. In fact, we've got one in our town coming up soon. Um, And he said, I'm not going to let you muzzle me like a rabid dog. A rabid dog? Like a rabid dog. No, but he was very beardy well he said like a rabid dog so he's saying it's a simile and not a metaphor right that he he (laughs) has yeah that he's similar to okay i the 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 uh the analogy i always make to everyone is that we're all wearing pants if we weren't wearing pants like a mask is like pants for your face (laughs) and if we all weren't wearing pants and say one of us was to have an accident and they decided that they were going to i don't know uh pee or whatever. Oh, uh, that kind of accident. Yeah, like that kind okay. of an accident or whatever. Somebody sprang a leak. If you're wearing pants, the only person that gets hurt 
is the person that's wearing the pants. It doesn't actually show up on any. You sure, know, the rest of us a, feel awkward and uncomfortable, it's, yeah, but, but it's a mild inconvenience. Wet. Yeah, exactly. So it's just it's just one of those things, and it's uh it's yeah. There's a lot of crazy out there, and. That's what this podcast is all about. We're just we're just trying to highlight the crazy, these, uh, especially in these weird and uncertain times, as we like to say. That's right. I feel like now we're a commercial for we say tissues that all the time. or right, something yeah. in these uncertain times. <laughs> so, uh, moving on to our next story. Next story from CBS Miami. A West Palm Beach pizza shop was forced to close for a day last week after a state health inspector visited. Now, some of the items on the inspection report included moldy bread, pudding, moldy oranges. Ugh, yeah. But let's face it. I mean, that's fairly run-of-the-mill stuff, that's right? That's what you would expect in, in you know, a Right, poor not necessarily what you report. want to see, no. but you're not surprised yeah, necessarily I mean, to see it. Yeah, I things can fall through the cracks. Sure. Yeah. Here's what made this a uniquely Florida story. Yeah. Stashed away in a freezer the inspector found a dead 80-pound iguana. What? Pizza Mambo's inspection report said the iguano came from, quote, an unapproved source, and the restaurant didn't have an invoice to verify this source. No invoice. Ugh, more receipts. A restaurant employee said that the iguana was a personal gift given to the owner, and in their defense, it was stored in a separate freezer away from the restaurant's food, and was immediately trashed once they were informed that it was a health violation. Well, that's good. It's good to know that it they waited until then to get rid of it. Sure. <laughs> so because iguanas are an invasive species in Florida, state wildlife officials do encourage that people humanely kill them. They're not dangerous, at least not to humans, but they can damage seawalls, sidewalks, foliage, your lawn. Right, they're not good for our pets. ecosystem. Right. The males can grow up to five feet long and the females can lay up to 80 eggs every year. And by the way, some folks also consider iguanas a delicacy. Oh, there's so many things in this story that jump out. I love the unapproved source. I mean, this is obviously I like this unapproved source is somebody that can really get you things. Like, you know, if, like we were talking about, we, we got a buddy, Mikey Bags. Our friend Bags. Mikey. Mikey Bags, who's got a guy for everything. He's got a guy. Yeah. If I need somebody to, like, tile the floor, I need somebody to do, you know, to a plumber, whatever. He's got a guy. Mikey's he's my go-to for, for any time I need to find somebody. Do you think Mikey has an iguana guy? He might. I mean, it's, they're, they're delicacies. Um, the other thing about this is, like, did the iguana come dead? When oh. it first came, because that's what I'm noticing in the story that I didn't notice it before. It's like that he got it from his source, but was it dead already or was it alive? And then they just decided, to, oh, we'll put it in the freezer and then it'll die. Or I don't know what the deal is with that. Well, they're reptiles. I would think if you put it in the freezer, it would just kind of go into a state of torpor. Is good. that a word? Yeah, it's not good for it. I mean, it can't well, be Well, no, for it. but you know, when we have them falling from the trees when it right. gets really cold. Yeah. So, you know, they recover from that. Sure. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the fact that it's at a pizza place. This sounds like the, the worst sitcom plot idea <laughs> that you could do. Uh, yeah, it's like, I guess two guys, a girl in a pizza place. Up, We found an iguana in the freezer. Hey, what kind of hijinks can we get into? We got a great deal on some specialty meats. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. I'm going to be very careful about any exotic ingredients that I get from this place. Speaking of exotic ingredients, do you remember Evan's Pizza here in Fort Myers? Yes, that was downtown, uh, or up, or uh, some yeah, across the street from the TV station. Yep. They had what they called the Everglades Pizza. Oh, what a big deal that was! It was a huge yeah. deal. It had um, alligator sausage, yep. frog legs, the python. Python fillets, yeah. swamp cabbage, yeah, everything, everything a good growing Florida boy needs, or right, girl. or yeah. girl, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So the, I, you know, maybe iguana. I, why not? I mean, it's it's a delicacy. It is. It, it might People act, sell iguana You might be able sausage. to sell your pizzas for even more. Yeah, unfortunately, Evans Pizza closed down around four years uh, ago. So somebody else is gonna have to pick up the the iguana and run with it. Yeah, apparently yeah. so. So. Uh, I think this guy's first mistake, honestly, was not getting an invoice. Yeah. Having worked in government. Got to get the receipts. Document everything. Document everything. Always document everything. Yeah. If he'd have had the invoice, mm -hmm. he probably could have said, hey, this is a legit iguana. Yeah. Maybe not. Right. Depending on who his guy is. Yeah. That's a that's the problem. You always got to get that invoice. 
I'm also concerned, and I, I have not worked in a restaurant since I was, I don't know, 16, 17. So it's been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. A separate freezer, not for food. Yeah, that that really kind of surprised me too. I mean, I would think that if you're a restaurant, you'd be using up space for all your freezers. So if you had a separate freezer, a separate freezer you'd away probably from the need food, some, you'd, you'd probably still fill it up with something else. But I don't. What know. are you filling it up with? I don't know. Iguanas, yeah. obviously. I, yeah, it, it, yeah, it may not be the first one that was found there. <laughs> it might have just been the one that slipped through the cracks. And and an eighty pound iguana. Yeah, that's not that's that not is jump change. That's not small, right? That is the size of an average eleven year old boy. That is a big iguana. Right? I don't see how you could misplace it. Yeah, I don't think the iguana Especially was misplaced. It's dead and it's not moving around or anything. Yeah, I don't think it snuck into the freezer. I, I think uh, it, uh, something's afoot at that pizza. Strange place. things are afoot. That pizza Absolutely. mambo. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next story. A little bit. Well, not that the last one wasn't light. Um, from tcpalm.com, last week's episode of America's Got Talent featured a 73-year-old woman from Vero Beach All right. who was an immediate audience hit. All right. So she's 73 from Vero Beach. Okay. What do you think her talent was? Uh, yodeling champ? Um, no, interestingly <laughs> enough. I don't know where that comes from. At 74 years old now, Josefina Monasterio is a bodybuilder. Oh, nice. Josefina came out, oiled up in a bikini, and flexed her muscles for the crowd to the sun. 74 song. years old. Wow. Pump it by the Black Eyed Peas. Nice. She giggled a lot. Very high energy. <laughs> yelled, pow! Nice. Every time she flexed. <laughs> She's got a catchphrase. She's got a catchphrase. Right. The highlight, honestly, was when uh, host Terry Crews ripped off his shirt and joined her on the stage, and they had a little pose down. Oh, that is awesome. I'm so... Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. So, Josefina may have been an audience favorite, but all four judges gave her a no vote. Simon Cowell did encourage her to come back next year and, quote, actually do something. Oh, Simon. Well, Josefina is a, new, is a Corey favorite now. You haven't even seen her, no, have you? No, but I mean, if, we don't she, watch if, show. She's, if she's doing a catchphrase, she's doing all kinds of like cool stuff. She's 74 and looking ripped like that. She's and, got a doctorate in education, by the way. Yeah. I so gotta, she's a smart cookie. I got to see this episode. You put her with Terry Crews on a flex off. I love Terry Crews. I, I would, I would, He's great. I would pay big money to see that. That's a new hit show for NBC. But these, again, these judges are no fun. Simon Cowell, perfect example of that. Uh, maybe they are the next group that, that people should air their grievances in front of, you know, like instead of the Palm Beach Commission, just bring those people up there. Ooh, and then they could hit that big no button. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I just don't think anybody should not Gammy's Gun Show. No. First of all, she's got like a quarter century on me. I love the Gammy Gun Show right? already. Yeah, I haven't she, even seen it. She's got a quarter century on me. Yeah. She's a bodybuilder. Meanwhile, I'm excited that I managed to do nine push-ups the other day. Yeah. That was a personal best for me. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. And <laughs> thank I'm proud you, of you. Thank you. But seriously, you know, Simon's like, oh, come back when you've actually got a talent to show us. What exactly is Simon's talent? Yeah. Not nothing. He just says no to people. He's just, uh, Yeah. He's, I mean, he's, he's clearly a, <laughs> a great businessman. He's an excellent producer. But the only discernible talent that I can see is that he wears tight t-shirts and is is snarky to people yeah yeah she's gonna outlive him that's for sure right and she's now my new favorite hero she basically is like a paul bunyan you know davy crockett type character Ooh, now. Josefina. I mean, come on she needs a theme song yeah in these uncertain times we need, <laughs> we to, need look a hero. to Josefina <laughs> to lift our spirits you know and obviously america's got talent figure that out just the judges did so if she comes back next year yeah uh, at 74, mm -hmm. what what do you think Simon would like to see Josefina do? He definitely for her wants talent? her spinning plates. Oh, he spin wants her plates. pulling off some kind of stupid Ed Sullivan tr like, show like trick. maybe um, knit while she flexes. Yeah, uh, juggling bingo daubers. Yeah, like lean into the the old bitty thing a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, oh, she could like lift a uh, 78 Crown Vic. Ooh, right. Nice. Yeah. So maybe make it maybe make it seventy four so that it's like her actual age. 
she can lift the age of the car that she, or the whatever. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So she definitely needs to come back next year. I I do not watch More America's Got Talent. In my life. I have never watched America's Got Talent except yeah. the occasional video that somebody posts on Facebook and I watch it and I get all weepy eyed, you yeah. know. The Susan Boyle thing, the guy a couple years ago strings. with autism yeah. who was amazing, mm-hmm. you know, Josefina. Yep. She's she's the hero we all need. That's that's my problem. I'm not watching enough feel good TV like that. Apparently not. <laughs> all right. So our last story today comes from the Daytona Beach News Journal. Police say a 22 year old man from Delray, Florida, tried to steal an airplane in New Smyrna Beach last weekend. Robert Steenstra tried to take a fixed wing single engine plane valued at one million dollars at one thirty in the morning. Air traffic controllers contacted police when a distress signal had come from the plane, which, by the way, was still on the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Police found Steenstra sitting in the seat of the plane on the airport apron. When Steenstra saw the cops, he asked the officer if he knew how to fly the plane. The airplane was found, by the way, with every single switch turned on, the throttle up, and the battery dead. So Seenstra said that he bought the aircraft for twenty grand cash recently, uh-huh. but he didn't have the paperwork and didn't know God. who he bought it from. Gotta get the paperwork. He said he needed the plane to transport marijuana to California and meet his girlfriend there. Okay. The suspect was found in possession of drug paraphernalia along with a plastic container packed with a green leafy substance. He was charged with grand theft over a hundred thousand dollars, trespassing. And drug charges. Well, all of this so far checks out. I, I'm loving this story in so many different ways. First of all, I like the idea of the officers approaching the plane window because it's still on the ground. You know, hey, can you roll in? It's like, so where are you going there, Maverick? Where are you headed? Where are you headed? Where's Goose? What's going on? And I just imagine that if he's got everything turned on, he's just playing in the plane. Right. Like he's just pretending. It's like, just pretending that it's I like. I mean, it's who going? would have thought that flying an airplane is complicated? I don't know. Like, it just seems like riding a bike, right? It's, you know, it can't be much too too different. Right. He, but, he goes right to that disaster movie cliche, too, which I love. It's like, <laughs> does anybody here know how to fly this plane? The cop shows up. Do you know how to fly this thing? We're going down. I don't know if we're going to be able to land this sucker. <laughs> But all this stuff checks out. All right, he's got no bill of sale, no, no description of the seller. No. Doesn't remember what the guy looks like. Nope. Um, picked up his girlfriend in quotes. I'm I'm putting it in quotes. And is transporting Mary Jane to another state. Yeah. The least believable thing about this whole bit is the girlfriend. Doesn't make any sense. Everything else is just like I'm sure that that's just fine. I'm just a little suspect about the girlfriend. (laughs) Well, you know, here's another example, just like the iguana guy, of somebody who needed to get a receipt. Yeah. Get your, you know, my mother drilled this into me. Always get your receipt. Yeah. Take a picture of it. I probably have receipts from 1992 still. I'm not proud of that. that, But (laughs) all right. So, so here's another question here, and correct me if I'm wrong. Will do. Doesn't California have recreational marijuana pretty much readily available? Can confirm. Can confirm. So why? Why why do you need to fly the uh, electric lettuce out to California? Maybe he's trying to get his stash to Cali. Maybe he's got like he's just he's got, got something like, fancy. Tons of it. Yeah, I mean it's possible. He might have some uh, Ooh, some, maybe he's a some strand budding strain of entrepreneur. Ooh, there you go. See, we're just not thinking smart and thinking ahead like this guy is. I mean, he's flying. and He's on the ground. I mean, he's just all over. He's you know, oh, he's flying. Yeah, he's flying high, big time. No, I don't. Yeah, that's the that was the other part. It's like it's gotten so much easier to get what you need. You know, to get uh, high. On reefer, is it? Is it weed? <laughs> what do we the, What do we the, call it the these sticky, days? Sticky, icky. Uh, I don't know. Um, what's your What's your favorite devil, euphemism? Devil's for lettuce. Devil, devil's lettuce. Yeah, um, there you go. Um, the, the chronic. The grass. The grass. Yeah, I think we should go back to you. Know, you said reefer. I think we should go yes, back grass to like or ass. <laughs> nobody rides for free. <laughs> I think we need to go back to like those 
you know, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s terms. Come on, jazz um, cigarettes, baby. Uh, giggle smokes. Giggle smokes. Uh, the Tommy Chong. The Tommy Chong, <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. I mean, there's got to... Uh, if you have any other ones that you want to send to us, go to our Facebook page and leave them for us. So, so I don't know if I out. ever told you this. At my last job, we instituted a new employee manual, and they had a whole section in there on drugs that you couldn't consume. And right. okay. for whatever reason, they felt it necessary to include a list of street names uh-huh. for the drugs. Just in case you're not familiar and and so okay, I get saying marijuana sometimes referred to as weed, mm-hmm. but no, it was like a half page list of yeah. terms like giggle smokes. Yeah, and they're having fun with it like we were spliff and yeah. and just wanted to cover all their bases. Blunt. Make sure it's like, well, I'm bringing in yeah the giggle juice, you know. So yeah, you, there I, were there there's were nothing in the manual about that. There so. were expressions on there that I had never heard, and I'm pretty sure nobody under the age of 80 had ever heard but they were it it was really really outstanding but yeah i say i say we go back to that by the way do you know where the term weed first kind of was popularized no i don't i'm not aware so in 1943 i am just a a fountain of knowledge yeah you are i really am yep so, why I married you. <laughs> so in 1943, Time Magazine did this article, and I think it was actually an article on jazz, because you know jazz. <laughs> yep. Bad influence. Bad influences. The Dizzy Gillespies and the Louis and the yeah. Miles Davises oh, of the world. They're and the Charlie worst. Parker. Oh. So, so they did an article, and the article talked about the weed. Mm-hmm. No, oh. the weed. The weed. The weed. Like the Facebook. Right. <laughs> like... <laughs> the Google. Yeah. Um, the Ohio State University. Uh, oh, geez. They did an article and, and talked about the weed. Yep. And that was the first time that marijuana had been referred to as weed in print. You know, Time Magazine had millions of readers, so it stuck. Yeah. Who says Time Magazine wasn't, isn't relevant? Right. They, they made weed happen. Why is that not their catchphrase? It should be. Like their little slogan at the bottom, Time Magazine. Yeah, man of the year, all that stuff. We made weed happen. I think you're on to something. I'm just saying. All right, so what did we learn this week? Well, I learned that there's no mask big enough to hide Florida's crazy. Oh, so true. Um, I learned something I've really kind of known all along, but... You always get a receipt. Get the receipt. Take a picture. You got a camera in your pocket at all times. Uh, I also learned that America's newest sweetheart is a gun-toting granny from Florida, Uh and she's my new hero. Uh Oh, I see what you did there. Guns. Mm -hmm. I get it. Uh, And finally, I think we learned how not to transport the electric lettuce across state lines. Yeah, definitely don't fly it in a plane and leave it on the ground. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So those were our freakiest Florida finds for the week. As always, you can find plenty of other wacky news stories from across the Sunshine State on our Facebook and Twitter pages. That's right. Remember to follow us and like us. That's at FLA Freak Show. And if you see a Florida story we missed, feel free to share it with us. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps us out. Until next time, I'm Corey O'Donnell. And I'm Kirsten O'Donnell. We will be back next week. And until then, let your Florida freak flag fly. Goodbye.